one of the most basic sketches Carl ever did. This one is my favorite of all and changed the way I work profoundly. If you can't see it, it says money equals feelings, right? This book, The Price You Pay for College, probably would not have existed without that equation. There's not a lot of new questions in the world of personal finance, so it makes starting conversations, whether it's with readers or with clients, very complicated, right? You know, you don't want to be boring, right? You don't want to be the, um, the thing that, I don't want to be the thing that people are reading because they feel like they have to, and you don't want the experience of clients who work with you to, to feel like make them feel like they're going to the accountant or the dentist, right? What was happening was that readers were getting in touch with me and they were saying, Ron, um, nobody raised a red flag about what's been going on here. Uh, and all of a sudden my kid is into some schools that cost $300,000 and my kid is into some schools that cost $100,000, our, our flagship state university, right? Um, and we can't find the big data set that explains why the $300,000 school is $200,000 better than the $100,000 school. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. That's a new personal finance question, right? It's not how to save. It's not how to pay. It's what to pay for college. So that was a value question. So as soon as I reframed it for myself that way, I thought, well, all right, Ron, is there a way to make that a values question too? And I began to think about all of the feelings that this conversation, these, these family conversations around college tend to evoke. And they evoke fear, right? Fear of tumbling down the social class ladder if your kid makes the wrong choice or screws up. Guilt, guilt that you or clients have not saved enough or are not earning enough or are not striving, reaching high enough or that they're cheaping out, you know, if they settle for the state school. And then elitism, snobbery. Um, maybe it's not your own, but maybe it's somebody else's who you're worried about, right? You're worried about the snob in the medical and, um, school admissions office when your 17 year old wants to be a doctor, right? You're worried about the snob at Goldman Sachs who's only gonna hire from the Ivy League and you want your kid to have their shot, right? And so those were the feelings, right? And if we can get a hold of our feelings in this insane process that involves giant piles of money and our precious children, um, then we can have a values conversation about what our families stand for, right? And then what we hope to reach for and spend on as we launch them into the world. I love thinking of books like this as conversation grenades, right? <laughs> like you throw them in a room and conversations break out. And this is one of those books that can be set on the dining room table and the conversations happening around the dining room table will be sponsored by you for having <laughs> dropped this book off.